we have an outstanding panel of, uh, it's a large panel itself. Uh, we have two Atlantic City operators, Tom Pullman and Mark Antonio from Golden Nugget and Resorts, respectively. If you could just raise your hand, gentlemen. Uh, we, have two we have a prospective North Jersey operator in Jeff Garrell, who oper op also operates Tioga Downs and Vernon Downs uh, racetrack casinos in upstate New York. Uh, we have from the Meadowlands Chamber of Commerce, Jim Kirkos. And we're honored to have three of our uh, prominent elected officials here, uh, Assemblyman Brown and Assemblyman Mazio, along with Senator Van Drew. Uh, how we're going to work is I've prepared some questions for these gentlemen to answer. Uh, and if anybody, I'll direct it to a certain panelist, and if any of those, uh, anybody wants to expand on those answers, we'll uh, take it from there. Um, and this first question is uh, a bit of a loaded question, but, and we're going to stick to the pro case. Um, and I'll start with you, uh, Senator Van Drew, and that is, why should the state, uh, or I'm sorry, we'll start with Jeff Garrell on this one. Jeff, why should the state authorize casino gambling outside of Atlantic City? Uh, well, let me just start by uh, making it clear uh, that uh, I share the pain here because I'm a horse guy, and uh, horse racing is a struggling industry just as uh, you guys are down here. And what brought me into this is, is the horse racing component when, uh, when the governor announced that they were going to close the Meadowlands, uh, which for those of you, I'm sure most of you don't know much about harness racing, but the Meadowlands is the number one harness track in the world. It would have pretty much eliminated harness racing as a sport. And uh, a lot of people would have lost their jobs. And uh, I have two horse farms and two racinos upstate. It would have been devastating. So that's what got me here. So I certainly understand uh, what's going on, what you're going through. Uh, the reality is, you made the argument for me, is that there's been so much uh, expansion uh, over the last few years that Atlantic City no longer has a monopoly. Uh, when we've done focus groups up at Tioga and Vernon to try to figure out how to get our com customers, what do they want, when we ask the question, what, what, what makes you decide where you're going to go to gamble, 80% of the people answer convenience. So that means that uh, your customer really, your, your customer base is 50 miles for us. 90% of our customers come from 50 miles. The reality is there's only a million and a half people that live within 50 miles of Atlantic City, and there are 14 million people that live within 50 miles of the Meadowlands. Um, my, my objective is not to destroy Atlantic City in any way. Uh, because I think Atlantic City is too important to, to the state. Uh, it has a lot of jobs. It's a destination resort area. Uh, fortunately, uh, I'm a, we own the land that the Bethlehem Casino was built on, so we're partners uh, with them. And, and I've offered to pay the Pennsylvania tax rate because I know that we're profitable in Bethlehem at, the, at that tax rate. We would be profitable at the Meadowlands. And as a result, uh, we could, I think we could, uh, initially we would probably uh, generate about $500 million in taxes f for, the, for the state uh, when uh, uh, another project probably in Jersey City gets built uh, that would drop us down, but then you'd have money from them. So it, it seems to me that uh, clearly uh, using some of that money to help Atlantic City uh, is the way to go. Uh, for both the taxpayers statewide, because $500 million is real money, but the reality is that the only source of new revenue for Atlantic City to help Atlantic City that I know of is, is us. Uh, I've met with several uh, representatives of, 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 uh, of the governor's office and stuff, and we're the only source of, of new money, and, and clearly we all know that the growth in Atlantic City is, is not necessarily gambling, but other, other things other than gambling. My uh, very attractive assistant was here last weekend, and she talked about some pool party at Harris, and she paid $40 to get in. Luckily, she didn't have to buy anybody any drinks, but that's the future, and I think you see the same thing in Las Vegas. The growth is not in this. I don't think the millennials want to sit in front of a slot machine because they can sit in front of a phone or an iPad, but they do want to come and party they do want to come to the nightclubs, they do want to come to the beach, and in order for that to happen, uh, I think Atlantic City has to uh, clean up some of the areas that uh, were not 
were not addressed. And, and my idea would be we could, if we're going to give four or five hundred million dollars, maybe the way to go is uh, we start out by uh, taking two hundred million or so and giving it to Atlantic City initially. And then I know my Fireman has a, a, a spectacular project in Jersey City that'll take a while to get built, but he's committed a hundred million dollars a year once he gets up, up and running. So that maybe when he's up and running, we drop down to a hundred million. And I think over the next 10 years, we could put $2 billion into the town and really make a difference and really save Atlantic City. Uh, the, sta the status quo, if you want to keep the status quo, I think what's going to happen is what we saw last month. The, your revenues were down 16%, which is staggering. I mean, at Tioga and Vernon, I was up. So I don't think anyone seriously can think the status quo was the way to go. I think if we could invest $2 billion in this town, some of these vacant casinos can be converted to other uses, maybe condos, maybe rebel uh, people would want to live here. It would help the tax base. And uh, I think, I think uh, uh, you're lucky that you have a horse guy who wants to open a casino at the Meadowlands and is willing to pay such a high tax rate. Because the last thing I want to do is hurt Atlantic City. Um, I've, I've, I, we, we are prepared to uh, make it clear that anyone who's lost their job in Atlantic City, we would give first preference to for hiring. Uh, maybe we could work out some relocation allowance. Uh, I think we'd hire about 4,000 people. So if you want to hire these people who've lost their jobs, it's not going to happen in Atlantic City. It's going to happen up north. And uh, we do not intend to build a destination resort. I think you guys have branded yourself as a destination resort. And, uh, you know, I really think that working together uh, it would be a terrific, terrific project. I know, uh, you know, you may not all agree, but I'm not here to do any harm to Atlantic City. Uh, uh, the governor made it clear yesterday. Uh, someone asked him on a radio show, and, and he said, any, any casino has to give money to Atlantic City. I agree. We're ready to do it. And has to offer jobs to the people who've lost their jobs. We're ready to do it. Uh, I've got a great partner in Hard Rock. I think we would attract business not only from New Jersey. I mean, you got to, these people in northern New Jersey are going to, to Bethlehem, fortunately, where I own a piece. And Aqueduct and Yonkers, they're not driving all the way down here. Hey, Jeff, and we've got to get them back. You're implying then by giving $500 million to the state in taxes that uh, your convenience casino would do more than a billion dollars in GGR. Yeah, I think, I think so. I mean, Aqueduct today does over $800 million. In just slots. Just slots. I think we have a much, much better location than Aqueduct, and we have table games. Uh, I, I don't think it's a stretch. I think that would go down once the casino opened in Jersey City, but I would think there'd be probably a three-year period where we, we would be up, the only one up and running. And I think we could do a billion dollars. Okay. Certainly, we'll, we'll do as much as Aqueduct does. So if we just did what Aqueduct does at 55%, at that's, that's over 400 million. And then throw in table games, you're, you're up to $500 million. It's okay. real money. And um, I don't think it's a stretch. I think that the, that the Meadowlands is a great location. And I've been involved in New York politics. And I'll tell you one thing. They will never put a casino in Manhattan. That is not in their plans. There's no place to put it. The political guys don't want it. Think about it, it would wipe out Genting in, in, at Aqueduct and it would wipe out Yonkers. So uh, you'll see, uh, you know, the, yes, New York will respond, but they've already responded. They're going to put one in Monticello, which is the same amount, same distance as it is to Atlantic City. It's not going to help. There's going to be a, a Sugar House just started to expand. As the, he just said, there's going to be another casino in Philadelphia. I believe there's a, a major project in Maryland that's going to open. In right. So things for Atlantic City are only going to get worse, unfortunately. Well, let's talk about the case for uh, keeping uh, why it, casino gambling should be, continue to be restricted to just Atlantic City. And we'll start with uh, Assemblyman Brown to make that case. <clears throat> well, first of all, good morning and thank you for having me. Um, you know, a few things I, I think we should all be careful that this isn't a north versus south issue. Uh, the reality is by all studies and indicators, a North Jersey casino would not only devastate Atlantic City, but it would be bad for the, the state. And while I certainly respect Mr. Garal, and uh, I respect his investment into the Meadowlands, I want him to make a lot of money, and I want him to pay all his taxes. 
but I have an obligation to be a counterbalance to a handful of people and their special interest, what's in the best interest of the state, hardworking middle class families. If you look at all of the studies, they indicate that uh, a North Jersey casino ultimately will be bad for the state as a whole. Stockton University projects two North Jersey casinos will put at risk closing two more Atlantic City casinos, reduce gaming revenue by 350 to 500 million dollars, and put at risk another 10,000 direct and indirect jobs. Stockton University points out that within the state of New Jersey, 42 to 63 percent of the people who gamble in Atlantic City come from North Jersey. So all that you're going to do is cannibalize the market that you already have. And if you look at Deutsches Bank, they indicate that even though they're proponents of a North Jersey casino, they say the realistic amount is about $250 million in new revenue. So as Benjamin Franklin said, you're entitled to your own opinions, but you're not entitled to your own facts. And the facts are they simply will not be able to generate enough money to make up for the money that the state loses by devastating Atlantic City. Uh, the Christian capital advisors put the, the primary market for Meadowlands, uh, lot, uh, this is back when they were doing video lottery uh, terminals, falls within the same primary market for uh, Atlantic City casinos. In other words, all they're going to do is cannibalize a market that is already oversaturated. Uh, it makes absolutely no sense to build casinos outside of Atlantic City when all of the analysts agree the market is totally oversaturated. Now, we can't control what they do in other states, but we certainly have an obligation to our seniors, our middle class working families, to make sure that whatever plan we put in place is one that is not only in the best interest of Atlanta County and the residents, but for the state as a whole. And when you look at uh, the general manager of Harris and Chester PA said the casino market has tapped out and putting another casino in Philadelphia is unwarranted. It's a defined market. We're at a point where we're just moving customers around, all of us. I don't see that changing and with a new, with a new site near the stadium or anywhere else. 2014 analyst for the Pennsylvania Legislative Budget and Finance Committee confirms that as each new casino opens, it serves locals as a greater share of its patronage, meaning that North Jersey casinos will simply be pulling customers from Atlantic City. Uh, if you look at all the uh, analysts, and they tell you what's happening with the gaming throughout the other states, uh, Pyramid Associates points out gross gaming revenue is down in Connecticut, Delaware, New York, and Pennsylvania. We just had William Ryan stand up here and point out to everybody from the Gaming Control Board that their gaming revenue is down, that the increases they knew could not continue. And, and, and they attributed that to the increase of Ohio and Maryland. The point is simple. When, when you look at Atlanta County right now, and you look at our middle class families, the unemployment rate here in Atlanta County is at 13 percent. When you go to Hudson County where they want to build one in Jersey City, it's 6.3. 6 when you go to uh, Bergen County in East Rutherford, it's 5.3. We have double the unemployment rate here in Atlanta County. Last year, Atlanta County lost close to 10,000 jobs. That's both direct and indirect. Somebody has to speak up for those working families. Somebody has to speak up for the seniors when they will be receiving less ultimately because all we're doing is cannibalizing a market that is already oversaturated. Well, uh, let me uh, follow up Assemblyman Mazio. Uh, does the state have an obligation to look out at this on a regional basis or the state holistically? Because I think anybody would, ag would agree, and certainly analysis of spectrum is done, show that while well, Atlantic City would there would be North Jersey casinos would cause pain here. The state as a whole would expand the market. So how should the state look at this issue? I think the state should focus on Atlantic City. I don't think they should focus on North Jersey casinos. You know, it, this whole uh, idea of, of what came about as far as the, I guess, the uptick on the discussion of uh, North Jersey casinos uh, came about with, I think, some of our South Jersey legislators, um, Senator Whalen, uh, Senator Sweeney, and today you saw the governor um, talk about the idea or the discussion of North Jersey casinos, and they're willing to, to go ahead with the discussion. 
In my opinion, I think they were dead wrong. And I think, you know, my perspective on this region, and maybe, maybe I'm being a little bit selfish on this, I'm, I'm a business guy. And if we have 8,000 people that were laid off in four casinos, so my thinking as a business guy, okay, we're going to put North Jersey casinos up there. Is that going to increase to 10,000, 12,000? What does that affect to the region of Atlantic County, the business people in Atlantic County? I think it has a devastating effect. It already has a devastating effect, and we need to focus on, you know, I'm in agreement with Senator, uh, with uh, Senator Brown, that, you know, we have to focus on the middle class people, the people who are working, and that's my concern. You know, we're, we, as a business guy, I have to take care of my family every day. Hey, this is a part-time job, supposedly, anyway, but anyway, but um, I, have to, I have to focus on the people of Atlanta County and this district. And furthermore, I think the state should focus on what we intended to as the stabilization of the property taxes in Atlantic City. That will help stabilize our property tax in Atlantic City. Then we'll get investment, then we'll get jobs, the economy will get going. And I think that's the direction the state should focus on. We should invest in Atlantic City, uh, not divest because that's what will happen if we go to North Jersey casinos. Uh, Senator Van Drew, we saw Governor Christie's uh, uh, comments yesterday that he would not oppose a referendum. How, how engaged is he on this important issue, or at least important down here? Well, I'm sure he's engaged and he's going to look to leadership from the area and leadership from the state, too, for ideas. Let me just say clearly, and I want to give my own sense of it, um, I will not support, I will not vote for, I will not push for, uh, I do not believe in having a North Jersey casino, period. I want to be clear on that. And there are reasons for that, and it isn't just parochial reasons. And Mr. Gorell is a very smart, very, very intelligent man, um, you know, made some very good points, but really listen to what he's saying. So we're willing to, you know, strip the employees, take the employees out that have lost their jobs. So I, I see a picture where literally people are moving out of the area small businesses are hurting because there are less people working in the area and the the gains that we've just made most recently we begin to lose you know some good things are happening i mean we've got some problems no question about it and we all know what the problems are and we speak about them over and over again but our hotel bookings are up conventions are up internet gaming not what it should have been yet but still up the Harris Conference Center is going up, the playgrounds going up, uh, the Bass Pro Shops are up, Miss America is back, profits in general are starting to stabilize and in many cases are starting to go up. We're starting to look a little better. It's a new business model. What happened were, quite frankly, because we didn't do some of which we should have done, in my opinion, which was to make a cleaner, brighter, safer, nicer, more exciting, more Las Vegas-like atmosphere in Atlantic City, because we didn't do some of that, um, we lost some of our casinos and some of our employees. We're starting to stabilize. If we now were to build a North Jersey casino or two or however many, that is going to destabilize once again and we're going to be back into a spiraling down. And it's so important for folks, and this is really hard, and this is important to really um, focus the governor on this, and I know that he realizes it, and I know that he cares because he's been down here a lot, and to focus other folks on this who don't understand the area as well as sometimes they should. This is our gig. It isn't as if there is a diversity of opportunity um, for folks down in deep South Jersey, and by deep South Jersey, I mean it isn't, it's Atlanta County, Cape May County, and Cumberland County. Now, Cape's got some good tourism, but that isn't year-round. Cumberland County, we just had another plant closing, and some folks might have read about it. It was on the front page together in the glass industry, which is falling apart. So casinos were to be a major supplier of jobs and a way of life and to spawn small businesses in and around them. And just giving us money, uh, number one, isn't going to necessarily do that. And how long is that going to go on? And how much of a commitment is that really? And is that going to be constitutional? Is that literally going to be written into the Constitution that we're going to get that money? Because I've been an elected official for a number of years, and I've seen lots of promises and lots of commitments for lots of money 
that never panned out. Give us a shot here. We've got to rebuild this industry. It's starting to happen. We've got to straighten out the Revel. We've got to straighten out the college campus. The casinos, to some degree, are straightening themselves out, and we're starting to see some good. I believe that that would be cannibalization. I believe it'll strip us of more jobs, more people, and more local businesses, and further erode our local economy. Right now, we're seeing signs. When uh, Plain Ridge Park opens in Massachusetts next month, uh, that'll be the 42nd state in this country that has a casino of some sort uh, with just shy of a thousand casinos in this country. And we're seeing signs in some states that the, the voters are saying, you know what, enough. Enough casinos, enough gambling, let's just keep it where it is. Uh, and Tom, your company operates in multiple markets uh, across the country, the Golden Nugget brand, a, a fast-growing uh, uh, company within the, the Landry's and Tillman Fertitas uh, uh, organization. Are you seeing signs of uh, not so much casino fatigue because the interest is still to visit, but in terms of expansion and how do you think the voters of New Jersey would respond if and when this came to a ballot initiative to expand outside of Atlantic City? Our particular Golden Nugget brand and Landry's, uh, a lot of our properties are brand new, similar to what we, uh, we did in uh, Chairman Levinson. Uh, missed us when he was talking about all the reinvestment, but Tillman Fertitta came in and spent $150 million on a very depressed property um, that probably went through a five to six year stint of zero capital investment, um, cannibalizing its own customers over to the Taj property and just really gutting out a property. So when you look at what the Golden Nugget did and what we've done in our other jurisdictions, Biloxi, Lake Charles, Louisiana, and Las Vegas, we're small enough where we focus on what's important to our customers, and it's really customer service, cleanliness, and, and providing an exceptional experience. Um, as far as Meadowlands goes, um, one of the things that we face here in talking to our customers uh, from Pennsylvania, New York, is really the cost to get to Atlantic City. Even before they set foot in our casino, they're in $50, $60. You've got tolls. You've got parking that we have to charge them for because, believe it or not, we have to pay for every car that parks in our property. Whether it's valet, whether it's a comp customer, we're paying money for every car that comes onto our property. So my question in Meadowlands is if they're paying a 55% tax, um, their margin to be able to reinvest their, in their customer is going to be a lot tighter than what it is in Atlantic City, which, by the way, it costs us, our margins here are three times greater than what they are, or costs are three times greater in this market than they are in any of our other markets. And if you talk to Caesars properties and other properties that operate in other jurisdictions, they feel the same way. So it's cost structure, and I think Tillman was on record saying, it's not a matter of revenue in Atlantic City. We've got revenue. It's a matter of the costs and the exuberant costs. And, and I just want to reach out to Chairman Ryan. Um, I respect and appreciate what he said with seeing their declines. Um, they've stopped replacing positions, and I think it was 47 people where they've been proactive in not replacing these positions so that the regulatory costs are in line with what everything else is. We're seeing regulatory costs increase by 30, 40 percent uh, year over year when we've got four less properties. So I would ask from a Meadowlands model, how much is it going to cost a customer within that 50 mile driving range, because that's our sweet spot as well, how much is it going to cost that customer to get to Meadowlands operating via Jersey Turnpike, wherever they come in from New York, Pennsylvania. What is it going to cost the customer for parking and, and tolls even before they set foot on your property? Right, well, in terms of the, the voters, I want to go back to the voters. How do you think the voters will respond if this is put to a ballot, though? I, do you think they As a see, voter, yes. I would want to know because I'm a resident and I'm also an operator. As an operator, I can t tell you that I oppose gaming in Meadowlands because of what, do, what it would do to Atlantic City. As a resident, I would want to know what is in it for me? My property taxes continue to increase year over year over year. Am I going to get a break in property tax with all this additional revenue coming to the state? What is my benefit going to be? And I think that's still a question that needs to be answered. Jim or Jeff, uh, regarding casinos at the Meadowlands, whether it's the American Dream Project or at the, uh, the racetrack, have, are you, have you done any polling that indicates uh, what voter sentiment is toward a, uh, expansion outside of Atlantic City? It's interesting. Polling up in up in our area is is strong for a casino in the Meadowlands, but but everyone there also wants to help Atlantic City. 
as, as we do. I, I want to just, if I can respond respectfully to, uh, to the legislators that are um, concerned about the, the jobs and so forth. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a casino operator. I'm an economic development guy. And I want New Jersey, and while my constituency is the Greater Meadowlands region, I want us to, to leverage every economic development opportunity we can. And if you think about, and, and the studies that, that uh, um, Assemblyman Brown referred to before, I'm not sure those studies took into account what happens when American Dream Meadowlands opens. When American Dream Meadowlands opens, somewhere between 25 and 35 million people a year come to that particular project. Can I interrupt you, Jim? Could you explain to everybody just exactly what the American sure. Dream project is? Amer American Dream Meadowlands is, is a, is a uh, two and a half million square foot retail and entertainment complex formerly known as Xanadu. Now it is being, being uh, developed under active construction by Triple Five Worldwide, the operators of Mall of America and the West Edmonton Mall in Alberta, uh, Canada. And, and that particular project is in active construction right now due to open in the uh, spring of 2017. And where, where is that located? Just it's located on right here. on the Meadowlands Sports Complex on the eastern side of the complex. And so there's, there's going to be upwards of $4 billion of investment in that particular project. There was a billion six investment in the MetLife Stadium. There was a hundred plus million dollars investment by Mr. Goral over at the racetrack. And up to as much as 30% of the visitors coming to American Dream Meadowlands potentially will be international visitors. And, and up to 50% of the visitors that come to American Dream Meadowlands, they are visitors traveling to New York City. That is a whole brand new marketplace. Uh, so the idea of cannibalizing Atlantic City, I'm sorry, I just, I just don't buy that. I think New Jersey needs to think seriously about its gaming policy through the state. I think we can, everything that I've heard and everything that I've seen, Chairman Levinson talked about all the, all the growth. The growth in Atlantic City is not gaming jobs. We're not gonna, you're not gonna build three more casinos in Atlantic City. There may even be some more contraction in Atlantic City. You're gonna build all the other resort attractions around the casinos that are here. And that's where the job growth is. That's where the revenue growth comes in. So building a casino in, in, in the north in part of New Jersey, whether it's Jersey City or whether it's at, at the sports complex, makes economic sense so that New Jersey capitalizes on, on the, the, the revenue that can be generated from the tax revenue and the jobs that are created, not just in, in Atlantic City, but throughout the state. We have, and listen, we've, we've experienced in the Meadowlands the same decline. Back in the middle 70s and early 80s, the Meadowlands Sports Complex was the place. It had the world's greatest harness track. It had Giant Stadium. It had the Continental Airlines Arena then, which was originally the Brendan Byrne Arena. And then over many years, everything was in slow and steady decline. Nobody paid attention to horse racing. The stadium went down. The Sports Authority was using all its resources to put money elsewhere and not at that particular complex. Now we have a revival of this tremendous investment. Why wouldn't we leverage it? A multi-venue complex in the Meadowlands with its proximity to 20 million people next to, the, next to one of the greatest cities in the world attracting all of those people is not gonna cannibalize Atlantic City. Mark, looking uh, from your perspective as an Atlantic City operator, uh, you know, what, is the, what is the right number of locations or properties in New Jersey? Joe, thanks for having me today. Um, it's a pleasure to be with all of you. And as for um, Michael Buffer's intro, let's get ready to rumble. rumble. Uh, Jeff and James, I promise I will not participate in any boxing up on this uh, stage today. So, look, I, you know, I'd like. I, it's a little surreal for me to sit here and listen to all this um, and contemplate the, that we're discussing uh, North Jersey casinos at this point in time. You know, when you when you think about our lawmakers back in the 70s and why they uh, added gaming and, and put forth gaming, legalized gaming in, in uh, New Jersey and how it came to Atlantic City, it's all about job creation. It was all about helping seniors. And I think Atlantic City over the years has done a great job at that. Um, you know, I don't think Atlantic City and the gaming operators get the credit that they deserve. Um, I think things could have run better. City government got out of hand. And, and the story is well documented. I won't. Uh, articulate any further on it. But the fact is, if you look since Pennsylvania uh, expanded gaming and the impact on Atlantic City, it was clearly predictable. It was very predictable to me. 
I'm sure it was very predictable to all of you. And it is equally predictable, for me anyway, that an expansion of gaming north of us in New Jersey, something that we can control, our policymakers can control us, uh, will do more harm to the state than good. So with that said, you know, I look back and, and think, uh, you know, Pennsylvania and the, and the impact, our gaming revenues went from 5.2 to 2.6. I look at, you know, we, we kind of begin to overcome a Great Recession, uh, Hurricane Sandy, which has had terrible impl implications on with the media that we're still overcoming, to be honest with you. And then recently, the foreclosures. You know, we have four buildings in our, in our city right now that are vacant. One is a $2.4 billion structure. That is ridiculous that that is sitting there vacant. I think our policymakers should focus on what will make Atlantic City successful. How do we repurpose some of these buildings? How do we repurpose the Revel, get Revel open? Um, you know, Tom had said it earlier, you know, and, and Chairman Levinson very articulately said it. Morris Bailey came into this market. He took a risk on Atlantic City. He loves Atlantic City. Uh, he's the owner of resorts. He's the owner of resorts. Uh, he and I have had the same passion. Um, he is not for gaming. Uh, north of us or anywhere else in, in New Jersey, he wants to see Atlantic City succeed. So why not focus our efforts on making the boardwalk the very best boardwalk in the world, not in New Jersey, but in the world? Why not focus on cleaning P Pacific Avenue up? Why not focus on Atlantic Avenue? Um, you know, Jeff and James will say, well, money will come down from uh, gaming operations up in the north. The problem is when you open those gaming operations, and I've studied this for a long time, and we've studied it immensely back at the shop, um, the, it, the irreparable harm that will be caused to Atlantic City with two or three additional closures, you will not be able to overcome it. The beauty of Atlantic City is that we have a wide diversity of product offerings that make Atlantic City what it is. The people that come from Long Island and New York, North Jersey, at least at our shop, they're worth about 25% more than the common player anywhere else. We're going to lose a lot of those customers. But it, at the same point, uh, the part of the New York Gaming Expansion Act that Governor Cuomo signed last year authorized three additional casinos seven years after the first license is awarded. So we're now in 2015. So as the law stands now in New York State, seven years from now, there could be three additional casinos downstate. And I think everybody recognizes those are going to be located in or around New York City. So if there's going to be uh, major league gaming in or around New York City, why not have it on the New Jersey side? Assemblyman Brown? Well, <clears throat> for several reasons. But first of all, uh, as everyone has agreed, we are moving Atlantic City in the right direction, uh, building more non-gaming attractions and diversifying. Las Vegas was smart. And they realized with the contraction in the gaming market that they had to diversify. And so it took them about 10 years to turn their numbers around and, and so that they were deriving more revenue from non-gaming sources. And uh, so they went from 40% non-gaming revenue in 1990 to 63% by 2012. Well, our policy in the state, we did a handsome report several years ago, and they decided that Atlantic City was definitely worth saving. The Atlantic City had potential, and they put together a five-year plan, and part of that plan was to make sure that we continued to diversify. Well, within three years, we already had people from the north with their own interest in mind talking about North Jersey casinos. Well, if you're trying to get people to invest in your town to build non-gaming attractions, while at the same time people within your own state are talking about building casinos in North Jersey, which would take away 43 to 63 percent of the people who come to your town, you're going to hold on to your money till, till, till they figure it out. But if there's going to be casinos in New York City, why not just have them across the river? I mean, the New York City market potential uh, is incredible. Uh, well, you can see some of the data here. If we diversify, if you allow Atlantic City the time that is necessary in order to become a destination resort, a true destination resort, let us move those numbers off of total gaming revenue and onto non-gaming revenue. And while you start talking about this North Jersey Casino before you give us an opportunity to do it, 
you're defeating the purpose. And ultimately, you'll wind up with a state that is just competing with itself. You won't get the, North, the New York customers to begin with, and you'll wind up diluting a market that you already have. So uh, for those reasons, plus, if we allow Atlantic City and give it the time to continue to develop, when, when, when Governor McGreevy uh, years ago just mentioned raising taxes on casino revenue, $500 million was lost in the uh, market because of the uncertainty that he brought by simply floating that idea. Yeah, it was just a matter of 24 to 48 hours. That's right. And so when you take that same common sense and you say, well, if we're talking about North Jersey casinos on a regular basis, it's bringing the same uncertainty to the Atlantic City market. So if we were smart in what we did as policymakers, we would make sure that Atlantic City has the opportunity to transition. Then once it does, here's the beautiful thing for, for Mr. Garal and anybody else. Then we can talk about building casinos within our own state and competing with ourselves because Atlantic City would have hit that point where it can sustain that type of competition. Right now, with all the casinos around us, built all around our state, that buffer is up. We've lost that convenience market. But now we're going to take from our, ourselves and we're going to cannibalize the market and wind up so that the state of New Jersey ultimately gets less revenue from gaming than it does now. So you see it as a, a, an issue of timing then. Yes. And there is a discussion of trying to get the, uh, such a referendum on the ballot this November. Senator Van Drew, is, uh, is that going to happen? I Should prefer, it happen? I, I would, you know, you're never going to say what's going to happen, but I would prefer that it did not happen. Um, and I wouldn't be so sure that everybody would approve the ballot measure. Uh, you alluded to this before. Um, people, you know, it's, casino gaming has become the panacea for every fiscal challenge there now is in government. And uh, I think people are starting to realize that isn't necessarily the answer. So I think, um, and just to kind of shore up what was just said, um, I think, you know, that's why I pointed out before, we're starting to turn around. So before we are creating a lack of stability, creating instability, <clears throat> the fact that we need to work more on our conventions, our hotel bookings, the internet gaming, the whole thing, the conferences, um, if we continue to work on that locally here and get to a point where we're stronger and diversified enough, we may not be Las Vegas, but we certainly may be strong enough, diversified enough, and then have enough retail, entertainment, and other forms of, you know, enjoyment that would go on here that it's not going to matter. And that's the point. So I think it's too early. Okay. I, I just like to, um, it, it's amazing to me that um, we just saw a property that someone built for $2.4 billion that they couldn't give away in the free market. That being Rebel. Being Rebel. They couldn't give it away. I mean, two point, who ever heard of a project that's two years old that sells for three cents on the dollar? So I think, I think you know, I'm sitting here listening and I'm saying, well, I've got a plan where we're going to invest $2 billion in Atlantic City to really re rebuild it and make it what, it what it should be. And people are saying, we don't want your $2 billion. Now, collectively, all of the casinos combined last year made $360 million. So one thing's for sure, that group of people aren't putting in $200 million a year of their $360 million of profit to rebuild this town. The only way this place is going to get rebuilt is with money from the north. And it's the silliest argument. I mean, I feel your pain, but you don't feel my pain. There, there's, we have 7,000 people in the horse racing industry that are going to be out of work. Because unfortunately, rightly or wrongly, every state that we compete with subsidizes racetracks. But isn't that the big lie, Jeff? Every, all the racetracks say, oh, you know, we want to save the horsemen. I mean, Honestly, most racetrack operators would shut down racing tomorrow if they couldn't just go with the slots. You're absolutely right. Unfortunately, I'm not one of them because I'm a horse guy. Uh, but yes, you, you're correct. But having said that, uh, the, the reason that, the, that, the, that they gave this, this money was to keep the jobs. The same argument that Chris Brown and everybody else is making. Um, there's no way Atlantic City is going to be uh, what you want it to be when you have an airport that gets no flights. Um, 
we're, we're talking about, Steve Norton keeps saying, you, you use some of this money. There's 40 flights a day from Atlanta to Las Vegas. There are no flights a day from Atlanta to Atlantic City. Does that make any sense? I mean, the flight from Atlanta to Atlantic City is probably an hour. To Las Vegas is probably four hours, costs three times as much. You've got, you've got to, you guys get 1% of the convention, of the $19 billion of convention business. You get 1% of it. You need to increase that. You're absolutely right. You guys have to reinvent yourself, but to sit here and say that it's gonna get reinvented without somebody putting money in to, to help reinvent it, I wish that were true. And all we're saying to you is, why is it good for the taxpayers in New Jersey to let the people living in northern New Jersey go to Bethlehem and gamble, go to Aqueduct and gamble? go to Yonkers and gamble. Why is that good for the taxpayers of New Jersey? And by the way, the, the good thing about this, Chris, there's gonna be a vote. And, uh, and you and I can debate this issue. I'm sure some, some TV station will carry it because this will be a big issue. Let the vo voters, all I'm saying is let the voters decide. Look, you want me to wait two years? I could wait two years. It'll cost the taxpayers a billion dollars to wait two years. And I'll come back here in two years and my guess is there'll probably be four casinos open. Assemblyman Mazio, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think that, uh, you know, that $2 billion, you know, you're talking about if you give Atlantic City $2 billion clear, I think the, the um, in all due respect, I, I don't know if you know exactly what's, what's, what's going on in Atlantic City right now. That's what we're saying, and Assemblyman Brown and, and Senator Vandrew um, also mentioned that you know, we're in a transition period here as far as Atlantic City trying to build a destination resort. And the fact of the matter is that how we feel about it is that if you put gaming up north, you're going to, first of all, probably take dollars. I don't know how, how you cut it up, but you're going to take dollars, revenue dollars, and it's going to go up north. That's the way we feel about it. And the, and the, and the fact of the matter is... Um, We've been trying, uh, we have a new Meet AC convention center the last couple of years, and you know and I know that conventions, you can't book today for tomorrow, you book today for two, three years down the road. And Meet AC has a great um, plan in place. We just booked uh, meeting professionals, which we lacked in this area for a long time, the business, the midweek business. And that's going to be a plus for Atlantic City. So we're, we're doing things. All we're asking, we need time right now to establish, to focus on Atlantic City as um, a destination resort. And it's going to take a little bit more time by refocusing on North Jersey casinos. That's not going to help Atlantic City. And, you know, I know you throw that $2 billion out there like it's, it's, going, to, it's going to come clear. But, you know, there's going to be... I'm really skeptical, well, uh, skeptical about the number because if we lose $200 million in revenue and you give us whatever, $100 million or whatever, the number's going to fall into place, we're still down $100 million. I don't know how those numbers that you're talking about come, come to fruition, but, you know, certainly I'm not in the casino business. I sell apples and oranges, um, and, you know, I, I look at business simple, but I don't see that numbers happening. Yeah, but, but, Mark, 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 but, but you guys are right. Uh, Mark, Mark, we'll get yeah. to you after next, Jeff. Uh, Mark, your uh, thoughts on that? Yes. Um, you know, um, as many people have said, we are in a transition right now. I mean, with the governor's efforts, with Senator Sweeney's efforts, uh, we've been working together. Part of our biggest problem has been the cost of doing business in Atlantic City. So we have a lot of things on the agenda to get passed through the legislation. Uh, hopefully the pilot program, which will really help to stabilize uh, the outlook for costs for the casinos, which is one of the you know, uh, property taxes has always been one of the biggest burdens that we've had. There's a lot of moving parts with this. It is completely premature. That's why I said it's surreal to think that we're discussing this. This needs time to shake out. Atlantic City has billions of dollars of invested capital over the years that are at risk here. and. You know, you know, sometimes you have to uh, take yourself out of the detail and go a little higher uh, at a 30,000 foot level and think, you know, the causes and effects. And I understand, I can completely get what Jeff is saying. The problem is, this is what's going to happen. As I said, it's as predictable as the PA effect. 
you're going to lose two or three casinos when this happens because the money's not going to flow fast enough to Atlantic City. And, it's, and when it flows, it's going to be, it's going to be uh, filling budget deficits in the city, the new deficits that are going to occur in the city budget. The problem is you're going to take unemployment from 13% in Atlantic County to 20%. You, foreclosure rates in Atlantic County are the highest in the nation. These are things that you can't really, when you're talking about it on a granular basis, you can't put a number to, but I can tell you the burden on the state will be bigger if this happens, net, net, net. And that's why what I ask for is we be sensible about this subject. Let's do, someone does an independent um, economic study that shows the real effect of that. the real effect <laughs> of of what's going to happen to New Jersey. Put it forth if it's going to go on a referendum. Put it forth to the voters. But I will tell you, and I've looked at it. It's a negative to New Jersey, and it's certainly a negative to Atlantic City. Jeff Andrew, should the should the state be uh, effectively governing uh, market demand and, and the marketplace in that regard? I, I just before we go on to that, there's, there's a point I wanted to make because I think it's a really significant point. If the Meadowlands were to fail, if there were to be a real problem there, certainly... Fail with you, gaming or just... Uh, fail with gaming, fail and whatever would happen, it would be a source of a problem. Um, it would have an economic effect in the area, but it would in no way relate to the kind of effect that... This is, in real terms, in real people, and I think that's what the legislators are trying to stay here. If, if what he just said is correct, um, that means that foreclosures are going to go up more, that housing values are going to go down more, that stores are going to close more. And that's regardless of the fact whether a hundred million dollars or whatever it is is given. And is that going to be in perpetuity? And how we can guarantee that? I don't know. So the bottom line is it would be what Atlantic City and gaming means to South Jersey is similar to what pharma or high tech or the financial industry means to North Jersey. This is what we have. This is it. This is the main driver. This in tourism. So if we screw it up and if we don't do it right and if what is really, if what these gentlemen are saying is accurate and we're going to lose another couple of casinos and X thousands of, of more employees, we're really going to become an area that's a depressed area beyond what we've seen now. We're starting to turn around, so while we're achieving some stability and we're starting to turn around and the new business model seems to be working, before we do anything new, controversial and scary, we ought to make sure that we're doing the right thing. And there's nobody, there's nobody that can say that they're sure that building North Jersey casinos is the right thing. Okay, let's look more specifically at Atlantic City. You talked about a turnaround, but we're seeing a real division between the Marina District, where we are now, and the Boardwalk, where we've had four casino closures. Uh, the growth rate at the Marina District properties is two and a half times the growth rate on a same store basis as the Boardwalk properties. Uh, Mark and Tom, as operators in those respective uh, areas, is this a real concern? Is the Boardwalk going to bounce back? We'll start with you, Mark. Well, I'm, I'm happy to report that, you know, at resorts, we're bucking that trend. If you, if you isolate resorts out, you know, uh, we're up about 13% year to date just in brick and mortar gaming revenue. Um, our profits, you know, when Morris bought the place, he was writing checks of about 20 million a year. Happy to say we made our first profit last year and our projections this year are, you know, four or five times that. So, you know, I think as many people have said, you know, with the right investment, with the right level of service, with the right level of cleanliness, with the right offerings, product offerings, you know, resorts is going to uh, survive. Look, Even with two vacant buildings next door and another one that's well, we, we financially are now, precarious? You know, you know, Joe, don't be surprised. You know, they don't build them like they used to. We might be the last one standing. So. <laughs> Tom, your thoughts? <laughs> We're happy to be in the Marina District. Uh, you know, when we were looking for a property, we had an opportunity at the Atlantic Club, and we had an opportunity at uh, Trump Marina. Although Trump Marina initially was the worst looking of the two properties, uh, you know, we had faith in in being next to the strongest property in Atlantic City and and in this region, and, and we're happy to be neighbors with uh, Brigada and Harris. You know, I look at what's in between Marina District and Boardwalk. And when you survey customers and you talk to customers, it's about safety and it's about cleanliness. And, and I can tell you, and let's you know, address the elephant in the room here, it's not all that 
safe going between Marina District and Boardwalk on a Friday, Saturday night. And that's, you know, we talk about what's wrong with Atlantic City. One thing I do agree with Mr. Grell on it, where's the scheduled air service? You know, I remember back in the, the day when resorts would have planes flying out of Farmingdale, New York, constantly. And, 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 you know, we try to bring United in from Houston and Chicago. That's not going to do anything for Atlantic City. Let's do what Vegas did, where they go after the four-hour drive, San Diego, L.A., Phoenix. Uh, you know, we should be fighting as hard for scheduled air service, and we might see a, a little bit more of a rebound here in Atlantic City. We have a chicken and egg situation. The airlines say we want to see the hotel rooms, and the hotel operators say, well, we want to see some airline service. So, um, Assemblyman Brown, what specifically does Atlantic City need right now? Well, first and foremost, we need to stop talking about North Jersey Casino. <laughs> After we stop doing that, uh, we do need to focus on certain basic amenities and certain basic uh, perception issues. And first of all, it does need to be clean and safe, without doubt. And I would argue to you that with the governor's plan and working in a bipartisan manner, uh, the city has begun that process. When you look at the uh, uh, tourism district, and you look at the ambassadors that are up on the boardwalk, and you look at the uh, new screens that have come up on the boardwalk, and you look at the investment that these casino operators have made in their properties along the boardwalk, and it, it takes on part of that wow factor so that when people come, they not only have a great experience inside the property, but they have that great experience outside the property. Now, there, there has been uh, massive opportunities that have been lost, and I've only been involved in this political arena for about three years. And we could all go down the path and start talking about why Atlantic City uh, is where it is and, and what are the issues facing it uh, that led us here. But the reality is this. Of course, the, the, the casinos along the boardwalk in particular are not doing as well because of the oversaturation of the market because we have lost uh, a large portion of that convenience gaming. So, so the transition into more of a non-gaming destination without the talk of a North Jersey casino to draw people here for many more activities and many more reasons, similar to what Vegas did and Vegas understood, that with the competition and the additional gaming, they had to find other ways and other attractions to diversify. But we need to be given the time to do that. Specifically what, though? I mean, these are, these are, everybody says that, but what specifically? If you had, you know, $250 million to spend, well, where do you put it in the city? Well, uh, the first thing that I believe that we should do is when you talk about uh, uh, cleaning up Pacific Avenue and making it uh, uh, a place where people would want to go, well, um, we have eminent domain through a lot of the properties between the boardwalk and Pacific Avenue. If you're able to uh, bring them down, because I think a lot of them are simply a hub for... Uh, crime, uh, for uh, blight, and that has to be uh, something that's realistically looked at. If somebody's coming here from out of town and you're looking at those uh, uh, portions of the city, uh, they need to be uh, turned around. They need to be changed, and there needs to be a focus upon that. When you talk about um, the Grow New Jersey, one of the bills that recently passed, if we can find ways to encourage that development of those areas. But we actually have to have a plan. And I will say to you that right now, this is an example of what's wrong with the state. Instead of actually sitting down and talking about, uh, well, how are we going to do that, Assemblyman Brown, we're talking about a North Jersey casino. And it's taking away from our ability to do the things that we should have been doing. Are, are all they long. mutually exclusive, though? I mean, is, is this just, is this ceasing well, any progress in the next city? Here's what I, w here's what I would say. We've, we, I think I heard somebody actually try to say the Xanadu project was a good project, and, and uh, I, I'm not sure if I heard it correctly, but when we hear the $200 million they want to send back to Atlantic City, well, the reality is uh, even Mr. Gorell has already uh, expressed a desire to have $150 million from North Jersey Casino Revenue for horse racing purses. When you look at Deutsches Bank, they told us, and they did their own analysis, and they are more removed, even though they, they are advocating for North Jersey Casino, they see you're looking at 500 million. If you tax it at 50 percent, that leaves you 250 million. And I find it incredible to believe that uh, Atlantic City is going to get 200 of 250 million. You're talking about a state that still isn't even funding the pension system. 
And you're telling me they're going to take $200 million to the, the legislators and give it back to Atlantic City? Well, I guess it's up to you and Senator Van Drew and Assembly Mazio well, to write the can, appropriate Can I just say one, you know, good, good luck with, good luck, and I mean to interrupt that, but good, good luck with that because I've been around the legislature for a whole number of years, and frankly, for a year or two, money goes where it should go, and then all these different funds are used for reasons that they originally were not indicated, um, and unless that was constitutional, unless that was literally written in the Constitution, which would be a bit strange, uh, I don't see that money ne necessarily continuing to go uh, to Atlantic City. The old saying, know, dollars are fungible. I'll tell you a real, real quick story. Everybody knows um, beach replenishment. Beach replenishment comes from the realty transfer tax. The realty transfer tax is the, the tax that when you buy and sell a home <clears throat> that takes place. And when I was a freshman, when I was a freshman, um, they were starting to talk to take some of this money because it was a budget problem and use it for other purposes. And some folks said to me, oh, don't worry about that. There's something called a poison pill. Everybody know what a poison pill is? That means that if you don't put the money where it's supposed to go, you can no longer collect the tax. So here I am, a freshman legislator, a freshman assemblyman at the time, thinking, oh, I'm Mr. Confident now, it's okay, our beach replenishment money is going to be okay in South Jersey. Come to find out that every budget document supersedes that. Every budget document can actually overwhelm that, and the money can be taken regardless. The only safe way to ensure that something is going to happen in the state of New Jersey is when you do it constitutionally. And I don't know that the amount of money is going to be set constitutionally. And I sure would be darn nervous that we would year after year after year that that money would come down our way. Well, thank you. I, I could continue to ask questions, but we would like to open the floor. Uh, if you would like to ask a question, please proceed to the microphone in the middle. And you can address your question to a specific panel or the panel at large. Uh, we would ask only that you identify yourself and your affiliation. Joe, Joe can I just say one thing? Sure. I agree with everybody who gambling in the north is bad for Atlantic City, but there's gambling in the north. It just happens to be in Pennsylvania and New York. The fact is, I'll give you some bad news. The, f the state of New York is not going to wait seven years before they put casinos in the, in the three regions. And the reason that's going to happen is the only casino upstate that's affected by, uh, by a casino in, in downstate is Genting's Casino in Monticello. And Genting is going to come to the governor and going to say, look, by the way, we don't care. Let's, let's just convert over now. It doesn't affect us. We own the one in Monticello. There's gambling in the north. The interesting thing from a polling standpoint, and maybe you'll feel good, first of all, the bad news is when we ask how, what, what is your feelings about Atlantic City, 80% negative. When we talk about do you think we should have uh, gambling in the north, it's negative. We don't. Unless we say what if we're going to use the money to help Atlantic City, then it jumps way up. I was shocked. The people in, in the state want us to use the money to help Atlantic City, even though you guys don't want it. Um, but believe me, it's not politically attractive to the voters if that money doesn't go to help you guys. And that's how, what the polling is. And if you want to ro roll the dice and, and, and wait a couple of years, I, got a, I have a bad feeling that people two or four years from now are going to say, you know what, it's a lost cause because let's not throw good money after bad. Right now, people want to help you. They want to save Atlantic City. That's what the polling, overwhelmingly, shocking to me, that they want to help you, and, and you should take advantage of that. We're, we're, you, it would, you're right, gambling in the North is hurting, but <laughs> there is gambling in the North, and it's only going to get worse. It ain't getting better, and then they're going to throw a couple in in Philadelphia, which I assume is a major market for you guys. And, and, and meanwhile, when Caesars has an, had an opportunity to go to Philadelphia, they jumped right in and paid 55%. When they had an opportunity to bid on a casino in Orange County, they jumped right in. So somewhere along the line, there's a disconnect. It's okay for them to open casinos and compete with Atlantic City, but it's not okay for, uh, for me. And, and Chris, I would never 
ever think we should take $150 million and give it for purses. We've got to give something, but not $150. It's way, way, way out of whack. And the other math thing, $500 million, if $200 million went to Atlantic City, that still leaves $300 million for the rest of the state. And you guys are right. Originally, you were given $500 million a year for senior citizens and health care and all that other stuff, but now you're given half of that. So, you know, you, you look at it, if you're a senior citizen, that money that's, the state has to subsidize the shortfall that, that's coming out of it. Well, we could discuss this for another couple hours easily, and I know many of our panelists are uh, champing at the bit to continue this discussion. I have many more questions myself, but unfortunately our time is up. But please join me in thanking our panel for a robust discussion. <laughs>